Well, happy Easter, and thank you for joining me here at Tesla Northwest and EVs. I just got the latest FSD update, 11.3.6, and so we're gonna take it for a drive on this windy Sunday morning and just get a first impression. I should have some opportunities to check out i5 a little later in the day, so stick around for another video and maybe tomorrow or this afternoon for that. But for now, we're just gonna do a first impression. We're gonna do my Herald's Market Loop, and then we're gonna drive through Anacortes. So this will be about, oh, probably a half an hour video. Thanks for joining me here on a beautiful, windy Sunday, and just have a wonderful Easter or whatever holiday you celebrate, or just have a great Sunday. I'll talk to you soon, and thanks for joining me here at Tesla Northwest and EVs. And just as an aside, there is the beautiful Fiat 500e we just picked up. So we'll be looking for some footage on that. We'll be doing some videos soon with it. So thanks for joining us, and uh, we're calling her Fiona. So thank you again, and catch you on the flip side. Okay, here we go, folks. We have our navigation in. Let's actually check. I'll show you here. Uh, release notes. And there we can see full self-driving beta, and this is FSD 11.3.6. So we are on the latest version. We're going to be making a nice big circle. So we're going to go out to Harold's, well, out the Harold's Market route that I normally take. We'll hop onto Highway 20, we'll come around, we'll go through roundabouts, and then we'll come back through Anacortes. So again, a nice little um, uh, mix of driving here, mixed route. And then later, later on, we'll see how it does on I-5. So again, I'm going to get us onto the main road, and then we'll let FSD take over. So again, thanks for joining me. This is a blustery Sunday, so it should be kind of interesting to see what we see. So FSD is engaged. We're going to see if we can make this whole trip with zero interventions. And uh, fingers crossed, right? It'll be an Easter Day miracle. <laughs> I uh, really wanted to get out yesterday. There is a brand new supercharger being built in Burlington, between Burlington and Mount Vernon. Uh, looks like a 16 stall, 15 or 16 stall version three. I wanted to get up there yesterday and get some filming done or Friday, but boy, this weather has been terrible. And I'm afraid, okay, first turn. That's very nicely done. Uh, I'm just afraid that I, if I had gone up there to film, you would have heard nothing but the wind blowing. So anyway, hopefully I can get some footage of that real soon. I want to get there before it opens. And check that out. I think it might have magic docks. I don't want to promise, but it looked like there might have been the potential there in the picture my wife took. It was really great. She knew I'd be interested, so she grabbed some photos of the uh, installation while she was over there. Okay, this corner can present challenges. Very well done. No hesitation, no overshoot. Okay, great. And I really wanna say like the test for me is gonna be how it does on the freeways. I was probably a little bit negative or a little bit down on FSD, probably more than a little bit um, during our Oregon trip. And you know what I neglected to mention is most of my complaints, 99%, wow, this is doing really nice through here, 99% of what I've been complaining about is really a comfort thing for the passengers or other drivers or the driver themselves. Most of the interventions weren't because of safety. Most of my frustration, not because the car couldn't manage to do things, it's because it couldn't do them well. And so I need to kind of roll my expectations back a little bit. I think I've just gotten a little bit too excited in my own head for what this is going to be able to do. But I want to stress that if I didn't worry about how my passenger's comfort felt or what the other drivers on the road thought, FSD could complete pretty much every drive that I have without an intervention. It's just I don't like making other people feel uncomfortable. So if that's a benchmark you're looking for, I'd say FSD is pretty close, 99.8% uh, there for technically being able to handle these drives. Where it needs to develop and mature is the comfort for the passengers and for the consideration of other drivers around it. 
And so I guess that's kind of where I'm coming from when I'm giving my critiques anymore, is not so much what can it technically be capable of doing, how would it make other people feel on the road? How does it make my passengers feel? How does it make me feel? So if you kind of ride along with me with that perspective, maybe it'll help you better understand when I get down on the car a little bit. Very well done. All of this is just great. We've got our first right-hand turn coming up. Uh, one interesting thing I did want to mention on this drive, right? It's pretty blustery. So the car is going to be dealing with uh, tree limbs and signs moving around and potentially the car itself being pushed around because it has just been windy as hell for the last three days. So we're going to roll up here. We'll take our first right. We'll try and get some footage of Interstate 5 this afternoon. We're going to go and visit my folks for Easter. But I want to be sensitive. I don't want to I don't want to be a testing monster. All right, let's see here. How we do how do we handle the stop sign? Good. Stopping for stop sign. Excellent blinker. Very natural rolling into the stop. Oh, that was wonderful. Just a momentary pause to look and then right back on. That was really well done. Really, really well done. All right, our next challenge is gonna be the Y up here in the road. Car will need to go left in just a little bit. And it's a bit of a challenge, but it handled it on 11.3.3. So let's see if it can keep that. I was really going back and forth about blasting over there to that um, supercharger. It's, it's by the Best Buy and T-Mobile, if anybody's familiar, on George Hopper Road. Really contemplating blasting over there this morning and getting that footage, but, I, you know, it's Easter, so I want to be sensitive. <laughs> so we'll get this edited and put up, and I think that'll be a good, a good little video for Sunday. Okay, we're coming up here on the Y. Let's see how it does. Again, thanks for joining me, uh, Tesla Northwest and EVs, on this blustery Sunday. Hopefully you're having us a wonderful day. Okay, we're following our buddy here with the rental truck, uh, rental trailer. Okay, come on, Amos, you can do it. Nicely done, very nicely done. I won't say it was the smoothest maneuver ever, but definitely um, confident building that it understands what it's doing. So this is a bit of a blind spot for it. We've got traffic coming at us from behind. And again, it's windy, so we'll see if that plays any effect on the car. Now, it's stopping way too far back from the stop bar. And this is a hard place for it to see. I can't hardly even see. There we go. Okay. All right, it did that. It didn't do it awesome, uh, but it did it pretty well. I, I'm not going to complain. So now we should speed up here and we're going to have a challenging left-hand turn here in just about two miles. Uh, this will be on to a high-speed state route. That's known as the uh, State Route 20 Spur. Heads over to the uh, Woodby Island of Oak Harbor. And if traffic is light, it won't be too bad, but if there's traffic uh, in both directions, it's high-speed traffic, so it's a bit of a bit of a gnarly left if, if there's traffic, so we'll see. And cruising through a rural route here around Lake Campbell. Bread and butter for FSD, navigate on autopilot. Uh, these roads are really not too hard, although if you go and check some of my Oregon footage, uh, you'll see I had a spot on a rural road where FSD was locked at 30 miles an hour and thought it was 30 the whole time. Ooh, hard break for those stop signs. That's not good. That's not good. Okay. I probably should have intervened, but oh well. A uh, rural route in Oregon where it, it thought it was 30 miles an hour the whole time, and then uh, every time it would see a speed, recommended speed into a corner sign, it would flutter my speed. It would drop it down, put, pick it back up, drop it down. It was really bad. It was That was about that way for about 12 miles. Uh, and that's in uh, my Oregon footage. You can check that out. There's a compilation video and then also a couple road trip videos. So we had one um, issue there. I didn't intervene. I didn't have any traffic behind me, although that would have definitely been an issue had someone been following me. 
uh, for a stop sign it didn't need to stop at, so it got a little confused there. We're going to come up here in just about a mile and take a left-hand turn. We'll see how it manages that. And then you got to see the uh, beautiful new Fiat 500e Fiona in the intro to this video. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me do with it. I think I'm going to do a first impression and a walkthrough. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the charging. Maybe we'll do a little range test, like a real world range test, see how far I can take it driving it um, in real conditions, maybe five over on Highway 20 and whatnot. Uh, and then anything else you want to see, just let me know. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. It's a great car. We'll do some driving stuff with it too. It is so fun. About 90 miles of range. I think it's about 22 kilowatt hour battery usable. Uh, and just so well built. Just a great little car. It smokes the tires around every corner. Alright, here we come to our left. Let's see how we do. following our buddy still with the trailer. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Again, it's 8 in the morning on a Sunday, on an Easter Sunday, so we may get pretty lucky. Yeah, not a lot of traffic. Okay, stopped way too far back. Now, any normal driver would see there's nobody coming, so we could just go. But now we've got some traffic coming. We've got a truck. And I don't like how it creeped out in the lane. I don't like what it's doing here. If there was traffic coming, that would have been bad. So I didn't intervene, but that definitely was not a very nicely done maneuver. Okay, again, intervention-free drive, but it doesn't mean that it hasn't made mistakes. And there, it headed over to the far right. So there's still some work to do with 11.3.6. Not going to say it's perfect. Um, that would have been an intervention had traffic been coming. But because it wasn't, we're going to let it just kind of try and do its thing. Uh, next thing we have here is a roundabout. In fact, we've got back-to-back -back roundabouts. So we're going to see how the car does with that. And our route I've got in multiple destinations. I may have to... We have to cancel it when we hit the one stop and then put them back in, but we'll see. But the idea here is to make that big loop. And here we come to our first roundabout. So far, so good. That's a little disappointing, but still no interventions, but two, two pretty major mistakes. And how would those impact the comfort of the driver or the passengers? Pretty badly. And other drivers on the road, oh, it would have really pissed them off. But technically, it completed it. Again, so this is where I'm coming at from kind of where I'm, I'm eyeballing things anymore is, yes, technically it can complete this stuff, but how is it going to do it uh, in relation to making people comfortable? Okay, so we're coming up here on our first stop, which is going to be the country corner. We're going to go through this roundabout, and then as we go, I'm going to resubmit our route. So now the car should take us down into this roundabout, out and into Anacortes. So we're going to see some highway speeds and another roundabout. So let's see how we do. No traffic, that makes it easy on the car. Okay, nicely done, no hesitation. I didn't understand that good. Knows the right lane to be in. Awesome. Really well done. Great speed change up to my 15% uh, offset. So we're at 63. Very well done. Very nice acceleration through here. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Wow. Pinching the brakes a little bit doesn't need to. So next we're going to roll up to the store. So we've got another roundabout to deal with, uh, and then we'll have some multiple turns before heading back into Anacortes, or heading back into my house. Mm 
Let's see if it scooches for the Amazon Prime van. Sure does. So even a box van it'll get over for. It. That's cool. And coming through this corner wonderfully well. This is a market improvement over 11.3.6. Just from how it's handling this drive, I can already tell it's it's more confident, it's smoother, it's planning, it's what it's doing a little bit better, thinking ahead it seems like a little bit more. But it is having a problem with some identification stuff. So now we've got a vehicle coming up quite quick behind us. I'm gonna signal, oh, no. They're going to pass me on the right. Didn't want to give me a chance to get over. That's okay. They're in a hurry. they got to get to the ferry. they got an Easter dinner to get to. <laughs> nice car. Alright, so we're going to get up here. We're going to see how it manages our roundabout and our corners where it struggles. And then we'll call this, uh, well, we'll see if it gets us all the way home be a little boring some of the same similar same similar stuff but we're gonna see if we can do this intervention free okay slowing down a little more than it needs to into the corner and that's all right so now it should start slowing us down we've got a 30 mile an hour speed mile, speed change sign up here Okay, there, yep, it changed, slowing us down nicely. Let's see how we get through this roundabout. Oh, very well done, very natural. Now we've got somebody blasting off in front of us, but the car still managed that just fine. So now we're gonna have it take us home. And let's see how it does. Now we've got, as you can see, a bunch of squiggly routes here. So we're gonna come up here. We'll need to make a few rights and lefts. And the car struggles with these intersections. So let's see how it does. This first one it makes fine, an all-way stop, but the next one is not a stop. It's a very tight turn, and the car um, typically thinks that it needs to stop there. So let's see what it does here. So good four-way, very nice approach. Nice BMW. Everybody's off to church. Okay, very well done. Now let's see if it can manage this corner without coming to a stop. Come on, you can do it. Nope, came to a full stop. Creeping. Creeping forward for visibility, it says. There's nobody behind me, so that's why I'm not worried about it. Okay, again, I didn't have to intervene but that would not be comfortable for passengers or other drivers. So people would be like, what the hell? <laughs> okay, we got another four-way or three-way here. Should manage this just fine. Okay, nicely done. So technically so far, folks, if I had asked it to take me out to the country corner to get a beer, then run me by the store to get a pack of smokes and some lotto tickets and then take me home, it would have done it. Uh, it just wouldn't have done it very comfortably. So now we're in a school zone. There aren't no kitties around, so we can boost our speed up. We've got a speed bump upcoming, I do believe. Nope, just a crosswalk. I thought it was a speed bump. Well done, good occupancy network stuff there. Now let's have it take us to Safeway. We're gonna re make it reroute us and see how it does here. Okay, good, good stop. Waiting for our turn, it says. Uh, 
that I totally understand. It's a legal thing, but it's also going to make people impatient. The yellow light behavior and the stop sign behavior is very annoying. Alright, so far so good. Getting a little rain. Uh, so far the wind hasn't really seemed to have been bothering it too bad. Been a little blustery, but no issues with that. Again, long video as we tool around testing 11.3.6 uh, for the first time, first impression drive, and we'll try and uh, we'll try and capture some Interstate 5 footage here later today. For today, for now, just a quick first impression. I'm really impressed. Uh, the only thing I'd complain about is that it isn't super comfortable in some of the maneuvers it makes. That, but technically, yeah, technically it's kicking ass. <laughs> Good. Gonna come here to this stop, and then I'm gonna force it to take me home here in just a minute. So we're gonna see lots of different routes. The turns are fantastic. Very smooth, very confident and competent, not jerky, uh, not missing its lanes. So I'm quite happy with how it's been managing that. So we're gonna come up here to another roundabout lots of roundabouts in this video and then we're going to tell it to take us home so let's go ahead and try and do that again and see if it routes us let's see which way it takes us here there we go oh yeah okay good took this roundabout just fine Like it almost uh, changed its mind there at the last minute. As, as a matter of fact, it did. It decided to take this way. And that's fine. So we can see if there's anything cool here. We've got some rain so we can see how it manages with auto wipers. Uh, auto wipers are on, as you can see. Boost our speed up here just a touch. And there are some speed bumps up here at the end. So we'll see if it uh, recognizes and slows down for our speed bumps. Oh man, the weather got really crappy really fast. Okay, notice we've got our blue box. Again, that blue box goes around the speed limit sign when you're more than 50% above. Yeah. Heck of an Easter. Alright, good. Oh man, I think we're going to get away with an intervention free first impression drive here, folks. Uh, with the caveat that we had a couple issues, right? We had a place where it hit the brakes for some stop signs it didn't need to. And we had an issue where it uh, slowed down and came almost to a stop in the middle of State Route 20 waiting to get into its turn lane. It should have smoothly gone through transition, gotten into that left-hand lane, and then made its way over, but it got freaked out by a truck. So those are the two major issues we've had. Other than that, uh, this has been a great drive. We've had blustery weather. We've had rain, as we can see right now. We're going to come up on some speed bumps. Let's see how it manages the speed bump behavior. They're right up here. All right, so we've got a couple speed bumps approaching. We're set at 37 miles per hour. Let's see if the car slows down. I can feel it hitting the brakes. Good job. So it started to uh, approach that speed bump. It started to slow down, made it over the speed bump, stopped for this light, recognizes we need to make a left and no one's coming. Very well done. All right, we are just about home. We've got a few more turns and we may run into something interesting up here. We'll see. And then we'll call this a successful drive with a couple caveats. Got some blue sky in front of me and it's pouring down rain on top of me. Go figure. What is it? It's uh, 53 degrees out. 
<laughs> I feel bad our tulips. Um, so it's it's tulip season right now in the valley in Skagit Valley, and they are just having a hard time with this weather. Really, really hope that we have a successful tulip season, but it's been looking pretty bad. Ooh, popos. Yeah. So we'll see. I'd wanted to take you on a drive to go see those, but man, this weather has been so crappy that it just it hasn't been possible. And same with getting you footage of that supercharger. I want to get over there, but it's just been windy and rainy and nasty, so my apologies that I'm a fair weather YouTuber. Oh yeah, this is just great. I never did get 11.3.4, I, I skipped from dot .3 to dot .6, so I can't say what improvements were in between, but this is definitely a point improvement. I can tell it's more confident, it's smoother, it's better, uh, better planning, like I said. Way less discomfort. There was a few areas where it was a little uncomfortable, but all the other maneuvers it made really didn't make me feel like it wasn't a person driving. So first impression, I would say very, very good. Um, we're gonna have to see how it does on the freeways. And like I said, we'll get you some footage of that. Uh, that's really kind of where the truth will be or the, the proof will be in the pudding there. Um, but on city streets and rural highways, rural routes, at least here where I'm at, uh, very impressed. Very nice. We can see the lines of the roads, even when it's not on them now. Nissan Leaf. Good, good, good. Okay, let's see if it sees this crosswalk sign. And Elon mentioned in a tweet here just this morning, well, number one, Starship is ready. So as soon as we get regulatory approval, that bad boy is going to launch, and I cannot wait for that. Uh, I think the 17th is the preliminary date. We're going to come up here and see how we do with this left. Uh, so Starship launch real soon, and then they are working on improving the neural nets recognition of pedestrians for FSD. So right now the the computer just sees pedestrians as cuboids. Don't do it, Amos. Uh, just sees them as cuboids, and for the car to really tell what a pedestrian's doing, it needs to be able to see what direction they're looking, where their arms are swinging, or li limbs. So they're going to be adding recognition features to the software to start being able to better tell what a pedestrian is up to. And I think that's really cool. So we'll see how that manages when it gets here. Okay, great left turn. Waited for its turn. Here we've got a jogger. Let's see if there's any timidity on the part of the car. Although they are on the opposite side. And then we've got some good examples of occupancy network stuff up here as we roll through my neighborhood on unmarked roads and that goofy roundabout that the car always kind of gets hung up on. But no interventions, intervention-free drive. We'll come up here by the airport. Man, it is windy. All right, Let's see if we don't curve our rims doesn't need to use a blinker, but it definitely much nicer use of going wide to avoid that rim, or not the rim, but the, the curb. It's very good. Nice speed through here. Don't need blinkers. That's a weird behavior. Now, it doesn't need to stop. It should just keep rolling here. It's just a roundabout, so this behavior isn't fixed yet. Way too far back. I think it has a hard time understanding what's going on with this roundabout. But we managed it without intervening. We're going to come down here. We're going to pop out onto some unmarked roads. So let's see how it does there. Again, I like this test route because it kind of gives you a mix of everything. We've got residential streets. We've got unmarked homeowners association streets. We've got rural state routes going high speed, roundabouts, city driving four-way stops, lights, lefts and right turns. I mean, it's all there. Here's another pedestrian. We can see him way in advance. Very nicely done. We're going to lower our speed. We don't need to rip through the neighborhood. 
and the car is providing itself with lane lines. Ooh, it likes to go fast when it can. Okay, well done. We're going to lower our speed again. And we should be driving by some cars on our right side here in a moment, so we'll see how it does there. It's our neighbor with the Tesla. Yay. Very well done. Oop, yep, good. Missed that car. Okay, and before um, some of the earlier beta builds, it would it would continue to try and dive back and stay right. Um, here it seems to see, okay, there's no cars, so I can stick to the right, but if it sees cars parked on the shoulder, it moves into the middle, which is a nice feature, and I wish it would just kind of stay there. I think most people do that when they're in a homeowner's association, but... Okay, there we have it, folks. We had a successful intervention-free drive. Uh, we made a whole loop uh, out to the country corner, up to the store, then down uh, M Avenue and up D and 12th. So we've, we've seen it all. We've tried it all. No interventions, just a couple uncomfortable spots, and the car is getting us home. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll catch you on the flip side, and we'll do some more testing on I-5 in a little bit.